Hi, this is Kathy with Barefoot Mountain School of Herbs, and in this video, we are going to discuss Shepherd's Purse. We're going to learn where to find it, how to identify it, um, harvest it, and process it into herbal medicine. The information presented in this video is intended for educational purposes only and is not meant to give any medical advice, diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Please do your own research and preferably make your own decisions regarding your use of herbal medicines. Okay, so we're going to look for shepherd's purse in the very early spring and it is fairly invasive. It's not hard to find and you can find it on uh, wet uh, sunny creek banks or wet areas. The shepherd's purse has a very long tradition as a styptic or a vulnerary, which means that it is um, slows or stops bleeding or helps with wound healing. It is especially helpful in um, heavy menstrual periods or in heavy postpartum bleeding. At one time it was called an oxytocic, which means it causes the uterus to contract and uh, clamp down on the blood vessels to stop the bleeding. Um, now they use it in conjunction with oxytocin or the pit drip um, to slow down bleeding in uh, women postpartum. Now there are several studies that back up the effectiveness of this. I'm just going to look at one real quick. Okay, and this study is from the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. Uh, it is from 2018, um, and it's called The Effects of Hydroalcoholic Extracts of Capsella Bursa Pastoris on Heavy Menstrual Bleeding, a Randomized Clinical Trial. Um, and basically, I just want to look at the conclusion uh, compared with the control group, the hydroalcoholic extracts, that's uh, water, water and alcohol extracts of Capsella Bursa pastoris, which is shepherd's purse, and they used a capsule, and it appeared to be effective in reducing menstrual bleeding in this study. So um, there are also several that they did in uh, reducing postpartum bleeding, so if you all want to, you can look those up, but um, the research does back up the tradition. But what I want to focus on and what I thought was really interesting was all the studies highlighting the anti-inflammatory action of Shepherd's Purse. Okay, so this first study is very straightforward. It was done in 2019 and um, I like it because um, it showed that it had strong oxidative, anti-oxidative and anti-inflammatory uh, activity and the um, methods and materials um, they used raw materials that um, that were um, dried and they used 95% ethanol so they basically just did an alcohol tincture so um, that's just something I feel like we can we can duplicate and their um, you know of course their results was strong anti-inflammatory activity. And then this study was done in May of 2017 and they did use a little bit different method of extracting but they basically reached the same conclusions uh, that it may be potentially responsible for anti-inflammatory activity. And then in this study done in 2014, um, you can see it shows anti-inflammatory and anti-superbacterial properties. Now what they did was isolate a, a constituent of shepherd's purse, um, but they basically found the same thing. Uh, it, it has potential anti-inflammatory and anti-superbacterial properties. And so there are several others, but um, I think that the studies have pretty much shown that uh, Shepherd's Purse is anti-inflammatory. And it's really important because inflammation is responsible for so many things like, um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Um, even um, allergies are uh, an, uh, 
inflammatory response by the body. So, um, you know, it can be made into uh, a salve for poison ivy, which is an inflammatory response. There are just several applications for shepherd's purse because of this one action. The last thing that I want to talk about just very briefly, though, is the antimicrobial features of shepherd's purse. And so we saw the other study just a minute ago, but I wanted to show you this one, uh, which is in the International Journal of Pharmacology and Toxicology. Um, and it was, let's see, the chemical constituents and pharmacological effects of Capsella bursa pastoris, a review. And they, uh, you know, reviewed a lot of the, they isolated a bunch of the constituents but they also reviewed the um, effects of them. And I want to go to the pharmacological effects. Okay, so they had antibacterial activity of the ethanolic and aqueous extract. So that's water and alcohol. Um, it was carried out against gram-positive staph, um, several um, gram-positive bacterial bacteria and gram-negative and found uh, antibacterial activity. Um, this one says only against gram negative, but then it also goes on over here to say that it was uh, gram positive bacteria, bacteria were more susceptible than the gram negative ones. But then they went on to talk about anti-cancer effects, anti-inflammatory that we've talked about, cardiovascular, um, psoriasis and MS and hepo, uh, hepatoprotective, so lib liver protective, sedative. There's all several, um, they just reviewed a bunch of the studies. And um, in, this, in this paper, they are just uh, going over all of the different effects of it. So, I don't, let me go back down to it. Okay, so this is, um, you know, a study that you might want to read. Um, Shepherd's Purse is very easily collected and easily made into medicine. I think it is just so worth going out and getting some. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how to locate and identify Shepherd's Purse. And when you walk up on a colony of shepherd's purse, this is basically what you're going to see. There's a whole lot of it because it is pretty invasive. But before you get the flowers, first you'll have the leaves. And you'll see they're, they are uh, coarsely toothed. Um, they'll be in a, in a rosette pattern before the flower stalk even comes up out of them. And then you'll have your flower stalk come up with the white flowers at the top. And here's a close-up of the, the, the flower. Here's a close-up of the leaves. Now you'll see they're coarsely toothed, but and the and the stalk is uh, basically smooth except kind of at the bottom. But one of the identifying features is the um, the leaves kind of clasp the stalk. So you see where my finger is. You can see how the leaves kind of uh, wrap around the stalk a little bit. Now this is a picture of the seeds and the seeds start forming. They're kind of in a heart shape. These didn't make a very good heart shape, but they're flat and um, kind of oval to heart shaped. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about processing and using shepherd's purse. I went out and got a small amount just to show you all how to make a tincture out of it. But it's a very basic, easy tincture to make. If you need help um, and more information on making tinctures, there is a video on my channel. So uh, you can go and watch that. But this is basically just the above ground parts. Take your scissors and you chop them up fine. There it is a little bit finer. And then you put it in a jar. And I used half Everclear and half spring water. I also uh, chopped up enough to make some um, salve so, or some oil. 
um, that I will make into an anti-inflammatory salve later. And then you put the cap on, label it, date it, shake it really good for about 30 seconds and leave it there for about six weeks. And then you strain it out and, um, and run it through a coffee filter and you'll have a shepherd's purse tincture. And that ends the video on Shepherd's Purse, and I hope that it has been helpful. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you.